right for a man to live with a woman. But it is not all right for a woman to live with a man. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the untold stories of your favorite movies and TV shows from the stars who were there. Today, the final part of my in-depth conversation with the great Pat Harrington Jr., who played Schneider on the original One Day at a Time. This chat took place about 10 years before he passed away, and it was my privilege to sit with him as he opened up about his career. Today, we talked some more about One Day at a Time. I opened up to him about how Eddie Van Helen broke my and many other hearts when he married Valerie Bertinelli. And please stick around for the moment when Harrington gave me one of the most amazing compliments of my career. This is one my mom won't want to miss. Let's talk a little bit about um, about the end of the show. That's Absolutely the not. That's off. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye, thanks. Hey, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Cab! <laughs> The end of the show. Yeah, as the show was wrapping up, did you guys get a final episode? Yeah, we got the final episode. You know, it's very, you know, it's full of uh, emotion and tears and and the audience. You know, it was, uh, it, yeah, it's all those shows are. I mean, the, the last show and uh, we we were on the air a long time, you know, and and uh, CBS wanted to give us a two-year extension. But, uh, uh, you know, and I would have done it in a minute because I come in for five pages in the first act and, and six in the second act, you know, you know, and make more money than I ever knew existed. Uh, but, you know, the, the stories had gravitated to the kids and Bonnie, uh, who had been central to every story, as is, it was a story about a, a divorced lady, you know, uh, raising two kids. In, in, in the 70s. Lear, look at Lear. How did he know? How did he know? He knew. That <laughs> dirty no good. He knew. What was Lear like? What was Norman Lear like? He was, he was, uh, he was delicious too. He's one of those delicious guys like, uh, like Steve, you know, Parr. He, um, there was always a sense, a sense of whimsy, uh, a sense of knowing and uh, a sense of fairness you know he, he you know he, he was really a, a piece of work is you know people for the American way hello oh, yeah. uh, sure so uh, if that organization goes on for another five years, he will have <clears throat> taken back all of my residuals. <laughs> <laughs> In donation. Great organization. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. So yeah, he was he was some piece of work. He was he was he was the heavyweight that everybody said he was. He was really, you know, he he, he was really a, a long knocker. He hit it. What's up with the hat? That's a, you know, it's like a gold tooth. <laughs> very, no, nothing mysterious, you know. What else was on the set, on this, on the studio lot when you were doing your show? Um, Jefferson's, uh, 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 Carol O'Connor, oh, uh, Greg Malavy and uh, in uh, the two names, the Mary Harvey. Mary. <laughs> If I can't think of one name, what am I going to do with Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman? Boutros, Boutros, Golly? <laughs> Boutros, Boutros, Golly. That one I can come up with. Um, yeah, so yeah, those were the shows. What else? I think that was of Lear's. That was it. Did you have any interaction backstage or anything like that? Just pretty much you stuck to your own? The guy, I, I, Carol and I, uh, we didn't hang out, but we we made room for each other, you know. To New York mix, you know what do you expect, uh, and uh, and we he he gave me the benefit of his experience in in certain areas, you know, uh, huh? What did he? Have? Well, you know, I don't know if he'd like me to do that, but 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 Carol um, had an enormous 
theatrical background. I mean, he, he worked with the Abbey players in Ireland, in Dublin, you know, which it had to be Dublin because that's where they are. But, uh, God, I really want to get back to Ireland. I mean, get back. I've never been. I want to, I want to get. I got to go to Western Cork. That's where the Harringtons came we from. We got some green for you. Yeah, I did. I know he's got some green. In. I hope I'm wearing it well. Um, yeah. So, so, so he had. He was. He, he told me about what kind of problems to, to to look for and and avoid. And you know, he, he helped. He really helped. That's great. Um, Van Halen. <laughs> Do you know how my heart was broken at Van Halen? How? How is your heart broken? Oh, come on. Valerie Bertinelli and after she's getting married to Val Van Halen? Please. Oh, I see. I, I see. Like the, 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 you were waiting. I was waiting. Waiting for, for Valerie to make a, an Eddie, yeah, Eddie the Sneak Van Halen. What was? He was terrific. I, I really, he would sit backstage, you know, quiet, just sitting back there, sipping a Coke or whatever it was. And, uh, and, and I would sit and talk with him. <clears throat> And it was like, we had conversations, because I, you know, I had another 12 pages before I go back on, you know. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, we had conversations where there was like 27 seconds between replies. And the replies would be three words. Well, I didn't say that again. And then, <laughs> but he was there, right? What are you asking me? I mean, I don't, I didn't see them. <laughs> How many were there? 12,000, well, yeah, you could have looked. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a delight. And you know, this guy was, you know, he gets all this rock stuff, but this downbeat nominated or made this guy the top jazz guitarist, even though he played no jazz, or the top guitar, lead guitarist, not j jazz guitarist, top lead guitarist in the country like six or seven years in a row. That's how good he was. Did he ever play for you guys on set? No, that son of a, no. <laughs> you think he'd bring, his, he'd bring his rack? He wouldn't bring his rack and play for us. He wanted me to do Panzini, I said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> You bring your guitar, I'll bring my pick. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my finger down and pick up Panzini, yeah. I really liked him. I really liked him. Good guy? Hmm? Good guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could t sit and talk with him. I mean, you know, and, and occasionally a grip would sit down, you know, and he'd go like that. <laughs> City Van Halen, man. This guy does split weeks on continents. You know, he works in Asia Minor and then in in uh, America. I mean, that's a split week for him. <laughs> Did any other visitors to the set that, you know, not necessarily guest stars, but people who came to visit the set? Well, uh, Ronnie Shell came to visit the set a lot because he was looking for work. But... <laughs> Ronnie Shell is a friend. He's he's a comic, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful comic. Yeah, but, but you mean like name people? Kissinger came to see Happy Days. He did. Can you imagine? He never. That explains never, everything. He never now I understand before. Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> I understand Nixon for the Happy Days. Of course, of course. No, I can't. If I if somebody like that had come, you know. We we weren't uh, we were not a show that was held in uh, high esteem by the acting community by and large. I mean, it was you know. How oh, unhappy days was. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess with all those guys, yeah, yeah it was with all those people. Sure, I guess I don't. I mean, if if Kissinger came, gee, I mean, what do you want? Well, who can I throw up <laughs> to the thing? Oh, really? Well. A uh, member of parliament came in and said, yes. You know. <laughs> funny episodes when you guys would do music, you know, when the, the girls would dress up. Yeah. Some, some of those funny, you want to talk about some of that stuff? Well, I loved, I loved, uh, I mean, I loved the one where Schneider was in a top hat and cane. I mean, that to me, that's the epitome of something. I really can't define that. But it, it uh, tells me something about Schneider's dreams and how he sees himself, you know. He, you know, 
He sees himself as Clark Gable. Why else would he affect that mustache? That cockamamie mustache. Right? Hey, Mr. Brown, I'll keep your eyes on certainly like talking to you. Anytime you want to half a grapefruit smashed in your face, let me know. <laughs> I haven't cried this hard in an interview since I interviewed John Stewart. It was just like my just Oh wow. John Stewart. Right John Stewart's a trigger man. God. Oh God, is he good. <clears throat> okay, here's the question. Okay. Very important question. All right. Let me just check. I'll put this up to ten here. Go ahead. What is Schneider? What is? What is Schneider doing today? Oh, Schneider is mothballed. Totally mothballed. But, however, for those of you interested and concerned, uh, we do have a, a piece of business about Schneider, Howie and I, in our act. Uh, together, we bring Schneider out. There's a problem with the mic. And he says, is there anybody backstage, somebody? And he's looking this way, and I come out in the outfit, right? And it's, it's really genuine Schneider. He says, the mic is broken, and I says, well, I it. let me check it here. I take out, pull out a screwdriver, flathead, not a, not a Phillips, a flathead. I, 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 I touch the thing, and the lights go out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then I wire it in the dark. You know, I say, <laughs> we, we carry kids. says, what are you doing? The lights are out. I said, I can see that. <laughs> he says, well, what are you doing? I said, I think if I just touch these two wires together and there's a huge spark, okay? And I've got this fright wig on with my hair straight up, straight up. Right? And smoke coming up out of the back of the thing. And, and the people are, now nah, they're, they're just gone, right? And I, I, I walk off. I walk off. Just give me a call if you have any m more problems. <laughs> <laughs> so Schneider comes out uh, whenever Howie and I uh, do our show. Hysterical. What kind of memorabilia have you kept? did you keep from uh, one day at a time, if any? Well, I kept. I got. I've got the uh, the tool belt, and I won't ship it anywhere, and I won't be. I just because you got to describe tool belt, right? Somebody says, "Wait a minute, wouldn't that Harrington man? Oh, this tool belt is valuable, you know." And were you were telling me about the Smithsonian before? Yeah, that was a no. lie. That was a lie. Yeah, I was BSing you. Well, you look so young and naive. I, I think it's so be such a you're you know patsy, pushover. I'm easy. Yeah, no, you're not easy. You're not easy because look, you thought that I might be, right? So that's not easy. Right, so there's a lot of stuff in the Smithsonian, huh? There's a lot of stuff in that Smithsonian. So it, would, it could ha conceivably they could have paid me a lot of money for it. Jimmy Olsen's bow ties in the Smithsonian. Get him on the phone. Please. No, Olsen. <laughs> Not the Smithsonian, Olsen. You just put the tool belt on eBay or something. Oh, God. Yeah, but how are they going to? Well, they have to put a lot of pictures of it. Because they're not going to believe Some guy could get on and say the original Schneider tool belt. Start churning them out and uh, just sell them and just sign them. And you, you, you gotta, you gotta... It's an idea for later. <laughs> Yeah, when the arthritis gets real bad. <laughs> what what what's the story you've dined out on all these years? The what? The, the story you've dined out on, the one you said you would not believe it unless you were there. Well, I think meeting Johnny at uh, Jonathan Winters at uh, at Tootsie's, and actually doing that line, you know, saying you came all the way America on the Andrea Doria, huh? Almost. No. And he and he and, and him buying buying into it. That's I mean Johnny is not one to be, but he bought he bought in because he was he, the guy said a guy who looked you know really like a nicely dressed and wonderfully scrubbed and barbered man said this that's Guido Panzani junior officer on the Andrea Doria, you know. So un unassuming. Yeah, yeah, right. So that we had a routine about about the uh, about the Andrea Doria, but I couldn't do those lines to him because you know 
<coughs> you were in the bridge with Captain Kalmai? Yes, I was in the bridge uh, with Captain Kalmai. And uh, Captain, uh, when we hit the uh, when uh, the Stockholm hit us, uh, he said a very quaint old Italian expression: "Ma can su carna aria la tuscaliti." Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Now, I, now that I'm in it, I can't tell you. What, I can't say what it means. Why not? <laughs> Ma, what do we hit? Ma, what do we hit? <laughs> Ma, blank, what do we hit? That's what he said. No, 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 what was the first thing out of his mouth? His lunch, he had the antipasto with some... Uh... <laughs> what do we miss, Pat? Uh, <laughs> the old days. What do we... <laughs> <laughs> we left anything out? No, I think we got it all. Um, we got it all. I, this is great. I really enjoyed this. You're very good. You're really terrific. Well, thank you. So are you. Thanks. You made it really so much fun and so easy for me. Thank you. So, moments after the interview ended, Pat Harrington Jr. reiterated his compliment, and I thanked him again, and then he said, no, kid, listen to me. I was a regular with Jack Parr and Steve Allen. You're really good. And then I passed out. And then I fired my cameraman for cutting tape before catching the compliment. So, if you're listening, NBC, feel free to call. I'm available. The name is David Levin. And I'll see you on the next Pop Goes the Culture. Thanks for watching. If you can't sit still in front of YouTube but still want to hear Pop Goes the Culture TV conversations, check out our new podcast wherever you listen to your favorites.